Hi there, this is Penelope. I'm just going to look at some of the questions that some of you are finding a little bit harder from the Chapter 9 homework. They do require thinking, but you should be able to get through them uh, not with, without too much difficulty. Question 15, I think this one is. Now, the function is a tan function, and the tangent function repeats every pi radians. Now, sine and cosine repeat every 2 pi, but tan repeats every pi. So that means the time period for tan is not 2 pi over omega, but it's pi over omega. Now what this question is actually asking in a reasonably oblique way, I get that, but it's just asking for the time period. How long does it take for the the line to get back to where it was. Okay, omega in this case is 0 0.05, so the time period is equal to pi over 0 0.05, and that is 62.83 meters, if we're going it to, giving it to two decimal places. Now, the next question, this question, there is a, an example done for you when you ask for extra help on the my math lab. There is an example done for you. You should be able to do most of it, the last little bit requiring some electrical knowledge. That's fine if you didn't know that, but it is there in the help on this particular question. We're talking about trig identities, and it gives you a clue it wants you to write it something as 2 sine something pi t cos pi t. The, the trig identity to choose then must have 2 sine something cos something. So if you look it up, you find one that says 2 sine x plus y over 2 cos x plus y x minus y over 2 and that's equal to sine of x plus sine of y. Now all we have to do is find the appropriate numbers on the right hand side because that's how we have to write the answer and we're done using the x and y that you've already got. So let's do that. I'm just going to move right over here. Not very neat and tidy but it'll be 2 times sine. Okay so I want x plus y over 2 so that's 398.4 each of the terms has got times 2 pi t, so I'm going to, to put that out, out here. Oops, 2 pi t. The t belongs to here, but the 2 pi can, the 2 pi t can come out. Right, so we need an x plus y, so that's that plus y, which must be the 396.2, divide it by 2, times cos, and then the difference of those over 2. And again, I'm going to take the, bracket's not very good, um, again, I'm going to take the 2 pi out here, and then we're going to go, this time we want it to be minus so it's 398.4 minus 396.2. Okay, the 2s will cancel the 2s. The 2 will cancel the 2. And we're left with 2 sine. Okay, we need to add those and... Now we won't add them and divide by 2 because we've cancelled out the 2, so we're just going to add them, and it would be 
pi t cos and then 398.4 minus 396.2 is 2.2 pi t. Okay, I've put my brackets in, in, a, in an odd place, but that's fine. That's the first part. Okay, so you were just using a trig identity from the PowerPoint presentation in class or from the list on the in the textbook somewhere. You just needed to mimic the left hand side. The left hand side said sign of something plus sign of something else. That's all you had to find. And then fill in the X and Y as appropriate. Now it says in the help for this particular question, and this is kind of specialized knowledge and you wouldn't get this in an exam, but it does give it to you in the help. So we can work out, first up, without thinking about it, that the higher frequency is this one, the 794.6 pi, and the lower frequency wave is the 2.2 pi wave. Okay, now it tells you that it tells you in the help for this particular question that the time period of the combined wave is that of the the lower frequency one. So t equals 2 pi over omega. Omega is going to be 2 pi over t then by rearranging that. We know that 2.2 2 pi is omega. So then we get that t is just by rearranging that oops i lost a pi rearranging that we get that t is equal to 0 0.91 seconds okay so that last little bit required the little bit of specialized knowledge but that was in the help for the question the rest of it you should have been able to do by looking at this and saying well this is sine of something plus sign of something else and then taking it from there is just a little bit of of algebra the next question requires you to kind of think about the picture that you're looking at you've got a rod supported by two springs so you've got a rod and it's held up by two springs and we're talking about the spring being horizontal. We want the spring to be horizontal. So it's going to start at horizontal and then the springs are going to and then it's going to they want to know how long it takes till it gets to be horizontal again. So one of the springs is governed by 3 cos 6t and the second one is governed by 3 cos 7t. And obviously, if you think about it, that rod is going to be horizontal when the two lengths are the same. So the bar or the rod horizontal when 3 cos 6t equals 3 cos 7t. And we need to find t. So let's put everything on the left hand side. We might as well take out a factor of 3. And now that's going to equal 0. Okay, so on the list we need to find cos of something minus cos of something on the list. Of your trig identities and 
if you kind of look at the two numbers involved, it's going to be on the list. We can forget about the three because we're going to divide both sides by three. So that's gone. On the list, you've got something that looks like this. Okay, so that, that kind of would make sense here that the first one is smaller and the second one is bigger. And that on the list is equal to 2 sine A sine B. All we have to do then is to find A and B and solve that equal to 0. Just remember another little thing that if two numbers are multiplied together to make zero, then either one of them equals zero or the other one equals zero. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got. On the left hand side, we've divided both sides by three, so that's gone. We've got that a minus b is going to equal 6t. And a plus b is equal to, or comparable with, comparable with 7t. Okay, so dealing with all of that, just treating them as simultaneous equations, then we get that a is going to be 13t over 2 and b is going to be t over 2. All right, all we have to do then is put that into 2 sine a sine b. So the left-hand side now equals 2 sine 13t over 2 sine t over 2, or a half t, or 13 over 2t, or even 6.5, but, but that doesn't matter. Now we've got two numbers that multiply together to give us 0. We can disregard the 2 because we're going to divide both sides by 2, so therefore we can say that sine 13t over 2 equals 0, or sine t over 2 equals 0. Now, Take inverse sine, so 13t over 2 equals sine inverse 0, or t over 2 equals sine inverse of 0. Okay, I'm going to have to write that on the top of the next slide. No, I'm going to insert a slide. Okay, so we ended up with saying that 13 over 2t equals 0, or t over 2 equals 0, because if we just go back, sine inverse of 0 is 0. Now, we need to think about that. It's 0 or pi. Now 0 must be where it's starting, so it's the next time around, it would be pi, and the same for this one. It would be 0, but the next time the sine curve is 0 is at pi, because you know it goes like that, so that's pi. So we need to not worry about the starting situation, it's talking about the next time. Okay, so we disregard the 0, so t is going to equal pi divided by 13 over 2, so that's 2 pi over 13, or t over 2 equals pi, um, t equals 2 pi. The question says, the if we go back and check the question, it says find the next time that the rod is horizontal, Okay, it's going to be horizontal at 0, we got that. It's going to be horizontal at 2 over 13 pi, and it's going to be horizontal again at 2 pi, but we're looking for the next time after 0. So the next time 
after 0, t would equal 2 over 13 pi, and presumably that was in seconds. Okay, so don't forget there is that help that you can look at an example in the in the my math lab itself. Now the next question, those of you that were in class, I did say we're only doing a sine omega t plus alpha where a was equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared and <clears throat> excuse me alpha was equal to tan inverse of b over a now this doesn't work for this particular question here because it says write it in the form a cos omega t plus alpha the rules are in the textbook but we're only looking at a sine whoops that was my granddaughter ringing me on viber um sorting out easter and the easter eggs which was apparently very important okay so if you get a question like this you don't need to do it you don't need to worry about it um if you want you can let me know that you've got a question like this and i'll just overmark it as being one uh you know one mark mark it right the the thing is that the the system randomly collects or randomly generates questions and it's just randomly generated one that we're not actually doing in this course so that's fine and if it happens in the test as well don't fret about it just leave it if it's like this in the test in the in the my math lab test and i'll just give you the mark for that question okay thanks for watching